The City of Riverbank Planning Commission meeting of December 21st, 2021 is, is now open.
<laughs> yeah, may we have roll call, please? Here we go. Chair Stewart? Here. Vice Chair Link? Here. Commissioner Dinan? Here. Commissioner Basso? Here. Commissioner Fenrich has an excused absence today. And Commissioner Rubin? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Now, at this time, any planning commission member or staff who has a direct conflict of interest on any scheduled agenda item to be considered is to so declare at this time. Public comments, no action can be taken. At this time, members of the public may comment on any item not appearing on the agenda and within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Planning Commission Board. Individual comments will be limited to a maximum of five minutes per person, and each person may speak once during this time. Time cannot be yielded to another person. Under state law, matters presented during the public comment period cannot be discussed or acted upon. For record purposes, state your name and city of residence. Please make your comments directly to the Planning Commission Board. Consent calendar. All items. We have comments. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Is it, on, is it on now? Okay. <laughs> My name is Jamie Agers. For the record, that's spelled A-G-G-E-R-S. I live at 7730 McHenry Avenue. That's in the unincorporated portion of Stanislaus County with a Modesto mailing address. My husband and I moved out of the city of Modesto city limits 35 years ago. We are very concerned about a project called Riverwalk that's being proposed for Riverbank. It would go from the current city limits all the way to Patterson Road, all the way to McHenry Avenue, which is where I live, all the way to the river, adding an additional 1,500 acres to the city limits. Um, we moved out of the city because we don't want to live in the city, so we're very concerned about this proposal. We're also concerned because we were not notified about the project, even though we are within the project area. Our parcel and all of our neighbors' parcels are listed in the notice of preparation that came out in June. We learned about it from a front page article on the Modesto B. We approached a similar project proposed by a developer named Groupie approximately 15 years ago, and we opposed this plan as well. As I'm sure you're aware, Riverbank's sphere of influence was increased by 1,500 acres, the same amount that uh, would be added now, just five short years ago in 2016. And the first 400 acres of this area is just now being beginning to develop. Given that, a request to add another 1,500 acres to your sphere of influence seems premature, if warranted at all. I urge you to deny this project without moving it forward to LAFCA when it comes before you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? My name is Dan.
Dan Whetstone. I uh, also live uh, on McHenry Avenue, Manesto. Um, our property, as well as most of these people here, um, the house overlooks the river bottom where this project, river walk project, is proposed to, to be developed. And it's just some just wonderful area, it's prime ag land. Um, you know, it runs up to the river. It's just beautiful land that uh, you know doesn't need to be developed uh, now or if, if maybe ever. Um, again, we encourage you to get out there and look at this area. It, um, again, it's pristine ag land. So please, uh, we know the uh, EIR is coming down the pipeline. So uh, please, uh, if, I don't know if that goes before you guys, but uh, review that with a critical eye um, and uh, give a lot of thought to this project. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Barney Agers. I live on McHenry Avenue, just south of the bridge on the east side. Overlook the uh, beautiful uh, bottom land, which is partly in floodplain. Um, one of my high school uh, classmates became a chief legislative analyst for 20 some years for the state of California. And she and others wrote a book on reasons not to build in a floodplain. Um, essentially, the developer comes in, builds, leaves, and when it floods, like it does over here, um, right here in Riverbank, the developers know where to be found. Um, there are several other reasons not to build out there. Several other reasons. 3,000 new homes um, with a four-lane road going through there, exiting out onto McHenry Avenue, just south of the bridge. Uh, think of the traffic impacts that would have on the entire area, not just McHenry Avenue, Patterson Road, Coffee Road, Oakdale Road, Kernan. Um, it's, it's a bad idea from that standpoint of just the traffic impacts. Impacts. Uh, the proposal calls for two million gallons of water to be stored. Um, at Del Rio, the two tanks there are a quarter million gallons each. Uh, this is eight times that amount. I don't know if any of you have heard the term subsidence. That's what happens when a large amount of water is pulled out of an area and the ground starts sinking. San Luis Obispo area has a huge problem with that. Um, the impacts on schools, um, sewage, right now uh, the proposal calls for putting a sewage line underneath the Stanislaus River and putting the sewage into Riverbank's inadequate sewage treatment plant. Um, I'm sure somebody's going to expand that, but at what cost and who's going to pay for all the infrastructure on this? You know, it, it, as Mr. Whetstone said, it's prime, number one prime farmland. And I understand that uh, there's supposed to be mitigation acre for acre. If you remove 1,500 acres of ag land, where are you going to replace that ag land of equal quality? I wonder if anyone has thought about that. Um, the the impacts of this are immense and I urge this commission to do some homework and figure out where you're going with this and how it's going to affect this entire area not to mention take away the cushion between Modesto and Riverbank not to mention the impact on the people in River Heights is what I call it some folks refer to it as Snob Hill, but huge amount of, of impacts that um, you need to know about. I urge you to study and not just rubber stamp this when it's time to vote on it. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Jennifer Whetstone, W-H-E-T-S-T-O-N-E. I also live on McHenry Avenue in Modesto. My sister lives here in Riverbank over on Candlewood. She couldn't be here tonight. She works very hard. She works in Escalon. And she wanted me to say, and she will be here probably next time to say this and more, but the River Road, Santa Fe, and um, well, she said even River, River Road, but Santa Fe, McHenry, and even River Road are like parking lots during commuter hours. So if any of you have friends or family that have to drive those routes during commuter hours, it's just miserable. It's just, you're just sitting there. It's awful. It, I don't understand for how anyone would want to build in this beautiful, uh, all of this wonderful green belt, the agricultural land that was the best part of uh, this area when I was growing up. That's what made it unique. That's what made it friendly and wonderful because of all the farmers. That was my opinion. It just seems like for future generations, it's going to be horrible. It's just going to be sidewalks and, and roads and just everything paved over house after house. And where's the water going to come from? There's already a huge problem with water. And you want to take, they want to take more, not you, sorry. Um, they want to take more of the water from the, the existing wells or you know the existing aquifer. It's just for so many reasons, it's just a horrible idea, a recipe for disaster. I don't have children or grandchildren, so anybody who does, I can't imagine why you'd want to let it just keep everything being paved over. Thank you. Hello. My name is Fred Walton. I live on Hogue Road, and um, I live on the bluff that uh, looks over the river bottom. I've lived there for my whole life, pretty much. And um, it's an interesting geology down there. You have the river, then you have the river bottom, and then you have the bluffs. And I, I believe high density should be on um, Oakdale and Coffee, Tully and Carver, up closer to the city. Out that area, there's a lot of small ranches and ranchettes. And um, I don't think the river bottom can take the pressure of high density housing. And um, I challenge you, all of you, to drive down there, walk through that beautiful farmland, the walnut orchards and the pumpkin fields, and you'll see one of the great wonders of the world. And we don't want to cover that with blacktop and cement and rooftops, all that nonsense. You know, pick that dirt up in your hands and go down to the river and it's just a, a beautiful setting. I don't think we should build on river bottoms. Sacramento hasn't learned. They have floods and and just all kinds of crises with building close to rivers and stuff. But um, if you must chop up that land, I, I, I suggest ranchettes. And the larger the parcels closer to the river, and as you go back and get on the bluff, then do the smaller parcels as you go towards town. Kind of bring it back like that. Something to think about, but really the thing is you need to get out there and look at it before you vote and decide. See it with your own eyes. Just a beautiful piece of land. It's a big, big, big farm, so it is a big unit that can be farmed. People complain about having 10 acres and 20 acres, that they're not farmable because they're not profitable. But this is a nice unit. So anyways, um, study the geology, have second thoughts about it, and make good judgment. Thank you. Hello, my name is Karen Conrado. I live on Hogue Road. Thank you for letting us speak tonight. Um, this River Walk is a project that we all that are here tonight disapprove of. It's prime agricultural land. I'm sure you're already aware of that. On a floodplain, you're already aware of that. Traffic is congested. They've already widened the bridge. They're not gonna be doing that for decades again. It's already dangerous for people to go out onto McHenry whether you're exiting McHenry or going on to McHenry. The already traffic is backed up from Ladd Road all the way past the light on River Road. 
um, and people truly are in danger. If you're turning off of McHenry, you can be rear-ended. And if you're trying to get onto McHenry, you are there for minutes. And again, um, at, at, at risk, especially if you're turning left against the traffic. Um, there is, as everyone has mentioned to you tonight already, there's a riparian, there's a river, it's Janislaus River, that ride, drive is alongside the land they're going to be developing. It's a habitat, of course, for wild animals as well as uh, land, the river. Um, you would be, if you approve this project, it would be on a floodplain. You would be, I don't know how responsible, but that's something to look at very seriously. You're talking about um, the developers not being here to take responsibility for that, whether it's loss of life or loss of property. There's also, um, I believe that the access roads they've talked about are not adequate for the amount of homes and cars that will be on this land. Um, in the NOP, they um, talk about um, housing numbers, but when you look further in the NOP, there's, there's room for growth of those numbers. So the actual number of houses that can be built are higher than they initially state. Um, I'm just going to deviate for a minute. Um, when I called the city clerk today to see if the draft EIR had been released to you, her response to me was that you know they have not received a proposal yet, um, which to me implied that why are you concerned, why are you calling now about this? And we're concerned because Riverwalk has been in the Riverbank plans for several years. It appears to me to be a done deal in a lot of ways. I feel there's a high expectation that there will be approved approval for this project, and I want to very seriously request that you consider all the implications and consequences of this decision. Um, once that prime agricultural land is paved over, there will be no going back. There will be no, you can't replace that land, and you can't re Re, um, re bring it back to its natural state. Um, another point that I want to make is that Riverbank is the lead agency for this. So it's not often I get a response of, well, you know, we're just facilitating meetings. We're just, you know, it's not, we're not doing this project. We're just helping, you know, they've requested us to help. Um, but I think that I think that you're the lead agency, and there's responsibility and probably legal impact for that position. Um, so I, again, I would consider very carefully before you make an approval on this project. Um, I will, it would, um, <coughs> excuse me, Jamie Ager has also mentioned this already, but we were not notified anyone along the bluff around the entire area of almost a thousand. Thirty years. seconds. Thank you. Uh, we're not notified. Um, um, and I know that, well, okay, um, again, there's an issue of schools. There, it, once this project is approved, even though there's 55 years in older housing, it doesn't mean that that's what it'll stay. And if there's house, schools, right now the schools don't have the ability to weigh in on this project, so that's something else to consider very carefully. Um, commercial, hospitals, buildings, everything, all of those, sewage, um, the infrastructure, everything is um, is inadequate and I don't know how that will be paid for uh, except on your citizens that exist already and the new ones, which is increase of taxes. I think those are all very serious issues that need to be considered even though on the surface it may seem that it's being taken care of. I don't believe that to be true when when the whole picture is there. Okay, so that, thank you very much and please, please consider carefully and and um, don't don't suggest that this goes to your city commissioners. Thank you. Yes. Are there any more public comments? There's one on Zoom. So you'll have to 
Yes, you're on. Okay. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Annabelle Gammon, and I come tonight to speak a little bit on a different same matter, but I have a couple of questions to ask. But before that, I would just like to say um, the SB 1000 was passed by the legislator and Governor Brown signed in 2016. This is the environmental justice in local land use planning. And the reason I bring this up is I would like to ask um, whether the city of Riverbank identified the specific location of each disadvantaged community in Riverbank and its sphere of influence. Is the city of Riverbank compliant with Senate Bill 1000? Rob Bonta, the California Attorney General, just visited Modesto, addressing the shortage of affordable housing. In Stanislaus County this summer, about 15,000 households struggled to find an affordable house to live. My questions are, how many units of affordable housing is in the Riverwalk specific plan? Has Riverbank identified one or more disadvantaged communities in its jurisdiction? Um, the state of California and also um, federal government is getting very interested in environmental justice in local land use planning. So I would like to have more conversation about this as we go through all of the specific plan processes of Riverwalk. Riverwalk, I don't believe at the moment has any plans for the units of affordable housing. And there are many other issues already mentioned by the previous speakers, which I don't want to repeat. So as we go along this long process, I hope that we can have an open con conversation about the real issues at hand here in San Juan County, California, and also our country. We are having climate change, um, things happening to us, and this plan, the River walk specific plan in my opinion just has no priority at this point and this area has been trying to be developed and because it is um, floodplain it could not even pass the easement for um, convert con conservation easement for agriculture because it is floodplain so my common sense tells me if it's not good enough to farm how in the world could it be good enough for housing or senior housing or anybody to live in when it rains the water comes from the bottom i know it because i see it so as we come along i hope we can have a good conversation between each other and look at the facts and also comply with the rules i think as of 2018 when you do amendments in the general plan and make amendments at least with two um of the um uh, necessary um agenda in the general plan like air circulation transportation you do have to have environmental justice policies put into place so i hope we have a conversation about that otherwise i think we need to pause before we keep on just building we do need housing but we do need affordable housing more than we need what crossroads is doing and what for sure what Riverwalk is planning to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any more public comments? Thank you. Now
now we'll move on to the consent calendar. All items listed on the consent calendar are to be acted upon by a single action of the Planning Commission Board unless otherwise requested by an individual Planning Commission member or member of the public for special consideration. Otherwise, the recommendation of the staff will be accepted and acted upon by motion of the Planning Commission Board. Item 2.1 is posting of the agenda for the December 21st, 2021 uh, meeting. And item 2.2 is approval of the December 21st, 2021 agenda. May we have um, a recommendation and a vote, please. I move that we approve items 2.1 and 2.2. I will second that. Okay, <clears throat> Chair Stewart? Yes. Vice Chair Link? Yes. Commissioner Dynan? Yes. Commissioner Bassel? Yes. And Commissioner Rubin? Yes. Thank you. <coughs> we'll now open the public hearings. The public notice for items 3.1 and 3.2 was published on December 8, 2021 in the Riverbank News. Item 3.1 is the architecture and site plan review. File number 21-0031, one church. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, tonight's item will be presented by Associate Planner Salazar. And uh, as you'd mentioned, this is um, the architectural and site plan review of an atrium and prayer room for the One Church on uh, Oakdale Road, 6101 Oakdale Road. Thank you. Planning Commission, members of the audience, applicants. This item is for One Church Assembly, which is an archi architecture site plan review application. And as noted by our chair, Stewart, um, the applicant is requesting approval for a new um, atrium and prayer room structure measuring approximately 1,910 square feet. And this would be added to an existing church. This is the assessor's map of the existing site. It's on the west of Oakdale Road, um, south of Patterson Road, and north of Morrell Road. And this is an aerial view of the subject property, which is for one church. It uh, measures approximately 2.1 acres with uh, 37 parking spaces. There are three buildings on the property. And this is the general plan designation of the site, which is LDR, Lower Density Residential. And the project will be consistent with the general plan and the following areas. 2.3, traffic circulation. 8.3, high quality buildings. 10.1, safe access. 10.7, strong pedestrian orientation. And 10.13, uh, connectivity. And the zoning designation for the property is C2 General Commercial. And these are the current building elevations of the subject property. There is the existing church. Um, the atrium and prayer room structure will be added um, to the north elevation and then extend a little into the west and eastern elevation. 
Some of the architectural features include gray metal exterior, which will match and be consistent with the existing um, church. They will have a brick wainscoting on the base um, along the exterior of the structure. They also have large transparent windows, uh, which makes it um, not only pleasing, but then transparent and um, provides an opening space, um, which makes it visually attractive um, for those inside and outside. And then we have a copper, a nice copper roof um, that will uh, enhance the new structure. And they brought a sample that's in the back in case anyone wants to see it. And these are the elevations of the various um, the facets um, of the new uh, prayer room and atrium structure. As you can see, the large uh, windows um, going out through the exit and ent entering the um, atrium prayer room, which is kind of like an open patio area. And this is the floor plan. Um, it will be exterior outside the existing uh, restrooms as you walk out the church. Um, in the south southern area, this is the prayer room that you can see, uh, which provides privacy for prayer and for meetings. And then to the north um, will be this large patio atrium area, um, which provides an opening um, for church members as they leave the church, but also provides a space for gatherings and to share and enjoy each other's presence. And this is the site plan of the subject property. Regarding the environmental, the proposed project is exempt um, from CEQA um, according to and pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15332 parenthesis A through E class 32 infill development projects. Regarding the public notice, we are required by the state to notify um, folks that are 300 feet from the property. There was 37 uh, business owners and residents around the property. We also uh, made sure that there was a public notice in the newspaper notifying folks of the meeting. And staff's recommendation is um, for the Planning Commission to approve resolution number 2021-019 um, to approve the architecture site plan review number 07-2021 for one church. And staff is here and the applicant is here to also answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any of the Deputy Commissioners have a question? I have a question. Does it uh, take up any space where the uh, parking spots are? Thank you, um, Vice Chair Link. It does not take up any space. They have an existing um, um, concrete area outside the church, and it's going to expand into that area. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, I'm going to open the public hearing now. Does anyone here wish to speak to this project? Hi, <laughs> uh, my name is Tracy Traub. I am the campus pastor at the Riverbank campus. And uh, currently, our lobby is a hallway <laughs> with bathrooms on the side, and it's about 10 by 10. And so we're excited um, also with what we see, the building and the plans of the property south of us. Um, we want to make sure that we're staying in line and that we're presenting something in our city that matches the quality and the stuff that's going around. So we appreciate it. We appreciate the city helping us with all the planning and getting this put together. And so I just want to say thank you for giving us this opportunity. We love being a part of Riverbank and we want to make sure our property represents Riverbank well. So thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments? I'll close the public hearing. Commissioners, are we ready to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, to approve uh, item 3.1, the architectural and site review plan for one church. Thank you. I'll second it. Yeah. May we have a roll call vote, please? Chair Stewart? Yes. Vice Chair Link? Yes. Commissioner Dynan? Yes. Commissioner Basso? Yes. Commissioner Rubin? Yes. 
Thank you. Passes 5-0. Thank you. We'll now move on to item 3.2, which is a conditional use permit for Latin freeze. Is staff going to explain this? Yes, this uh, next item is a conditional use permit. The uh, existing building where this uh, business wants to, uh, to move forward on um, had originally uh, cut and packaged chickens. And so the reason why this is coming forward is that they moved out of that building and there's some question whether or not the building has been empty a year or not. Uh, but because it is a slightly different use, we requested that they come forward with a conditional use permit, and they agree. And um, Associate Planner Salazar will be presenting this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Donna. Hello again, Planning Commission. This is application applications for Latin freeze for a conditional use permit. Land Free submitted a conditional use permit application to allow um, to get a permitted um, to be approved conditionally for a food processing facility at 6212 Roselle Avenue. And this is the assessor's map of the subject property. Um, it's located to on the east of Roselle and south of Patterson Road. It's located uh, south of the Monchine business and to the west is residential. Here's an area of the site. Um, this is in our um, M1 industrial area of the city, the light industrial zone. The general plan designation is IBP, which is Industrial Business Park. The zone designation, as I mentioned, is M1 light industrial. This is the current uh, building elevation. The applicant does not plan to do any um, changes, um, additions to the subject property. They may do some tenant improvements, but those are done and approved um, with the building department and over the counter. And this is the floor plan of the subject um, property of, this, of the new business. And they do, um, it's a Mexican type um, ice cream business. And they're gonna have different types of uh, flavors. Um, some of them that they've mentioned are like mango, um, avocado, different types you kind of see these typically like in uh, Mexican grocery stores um, this is a site plan of the existing or of the proposed business you see their production area uh, warehouse storage facility um, they've done a lot of remodeling and renovating renovating to the existing building to make sure it's um, up to current building codes and up to their standards um, the owner was previously one of the managers at um, La Michoacana, um, also ice cream business. And regarding the environmental, um, the proposed project is exempt from any additional analysis pursuant to CEQA, Article 51561B, parenthesis 3, by the common sense exemption that CEQA only applies to projects that have a direct uh, pot or potential for causing a direct physical change in the environment or a reasonably foreseeable indirect physical change to the environment. Public noticing, um, it was published in the news, Riverbank News on December 8th. 26 um, residents, property owners, and businesses were notified 300 feet surrounding the property, and that was mailed out on Friday, December 3rd. And staff's recommendation is that the Planning Commission approve resolution number 2021-020 to approve conditional use permit number 02-2021. Staff's here to answer any questions. Thank you. And I believe the, the applicant's also on the phone in case there are any questions for them as well, if necessary. No questions? No questions? I have one. I just, if there won't be any direct sales to the public. This would just be for the food prep. So they do want to provide a small, like, retail area. Um, I think like 100 square feet that they mentioned, just very small, just in case folks want to sample if other businesses or grocery store businesses want to sample the kind of um, ice cream that they sell. Um, folks will be able to try them out there or even buy like a small portion. Thank but you. they envision that being just a real small um, component of our operation. Thank you. Thank you. No other questions? 
Okay, we'll open the public hearing. Uh, would anybody like to speak for or against this project? No one? Okay, then I'll close the public hearing and uh, call for a motion. I'll make a motion we approve item 3.2. I will second that. Okay. <clears throat> Chair Stewart? Yes. Vice Chair Link? Yes. Commissioner Dinan? Yes. Commissioner Basso? Yes. Commissioner Rubin? Yes. Item passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. County referral. Item number five, county referral. Oh, the bottom of okay. Yes. Okay, are there any planning commission comments? No. <laughs> now we're gonna move to item six, county correspondence. I do not have any county correspondence uh, to share at this meeting. Thank you. Item number seven, staff comments. Um, I'll just share that at the last city council meeting, um, the council approved the second reading of the ordinance that, <clears throat> excuse me, updates the accessory dwelling unit section. So 30 days from that date, um, it becomes law and on our books. I do not have an update on the sets of plans that the city is uh, creating with the other cities in the county. I should hear something after the first of the year. And uh, once we provide comments on that version of the plans, and this will be our second, third version, then um, the county uh, public works will be directed to uh, plan check them. So we'll get them ready and get them printed and then when folks come in and want to build an ADU, they'll be able to just choose one and pull a building permit. Great. So we uh, look forward to that and um, it's kind of a side uh, portion of that. Um, I am currently working on um, an ordinance amendment that would allow for a planned development of uh, tiny house villages. We have one village um, that's wanting to move forward. Um, a business owner currently couldn't find some place for one of her workers to live. And so she and her husband decided they want to move forward and create tiny villages to help our service workers here in the city. Uh, many of which are driving in from Modesto and, and Escalon in order to work here. Hmm. That's the only item I have uh, for staff comments other than I want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and hoping that you stay healthy and that it's all relaxing for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. With those kind words, we're adjourned. <laughs>